Hi everybody. This is a video over chapter 11 in Intro to CPT class. The chapter we're going to cover here is Evaluation and Management Services, or we call these services E&M. Okay, for short, E&M Services stands for Evaluation and Management. I'm looking at the very first page of the chapter in your textbooks. If you want to pause me and follow along, that would be great. On the first page of the chapter here, you see a large green box, and it shows us the formatting of our CPT book, our CPT code books, and all the different sections here in the E&M area. You can see all the orange colored headings are the different areas of E&M. What E&M is, is all doctor's visits. Okay. These are all office visits, appointments, consultations, um, mostly things like that. Anytime a patient sees a provider, and I say provider, not physician, a provider, of course, can mean it can be an MD or a DO. It can be a PA, physician's assistant. It can be an NP or nurse practitioner. Okay, so I say provider. Any time that a provider sees a patient, we need to, as coders, capture their work, capture that expertise that they went to school for, and code it so that we can bill it, so we can get paid, so we can keep the doors open. Okay, that's what makes our job so rewarding and so important. Okay, we, we really do bring all this together for the providers. At the bottom of that first page, I want you to look, it says three factors of E&M codes. And I have these up here on the screen for you to see. I kind of split my screen here and I got a couple of things going on. These three factors, it says to correctly assign the right code in the E&M section, you need to look at these first three things. And number one says the place of service. And we go into it a little more in depth um, in a little bit over on, on the next page. But when we think about the place of service, we need to think about where are we, okay? Where are we at? Are we in the clinic? Are we in the hospital? <laughs> Can't spell and talk at the same time. We could be in same day surgery, okay, which is a part of our of our outpatient hospital area. We could be at home, okay. We could be at home too. So we really need to think about where we're at when we're doing this, okay. Got to think about that. The other thing uh, that we need to think about is um, the type of service. What are we doing? Okay, what exactly is it that we are doing here um, in this facility? If we have a regular doctor's visit, okay, it could be an injection. Okay, we need to get a shot. It could be, um, same along with the injections, vaccination. We could be there for a flu shot today or a pneumonia shot today, right? That time of year. Um, it could be a physical. Okay, what type of service are we doing? Or it could be removal of a mole, which is an actual, you know, small procedure. Okay, we need to think about the type of service, what we're doing. Okay, the other thing we need to think about is what we call patient status. And what patient status is, and it's talked about a little bit over on the next page if you want to follow along in the textbook, it says, and you can see, you know, the most important things here are bold, right, the bold terms. Under patient status, it says we have new or established, outpatient or inpatient. So we have new or established, or are we outpatient, or are we inpatient, okay? These are all things that we need to pay attention to when we look at patient status. And the difference between new and established patient, I wanna say is three years. This is something that you need to learn and it's three years per specialty. So when we read in the book, it says a new patient is one who has not received professional services from that doctor or another doctor in the same specialty, sometimes we think department, within the past three years, okay? 
So if it's been over three years since you've seen your provider because you've been healthy and, and you haven't needed to go to the doctor, as a patient, we think, yeah, that's great, right? I haven't had any doctor bills. But the next time you go back, your bill's going to be a little bit higher because you have a new patient charge on that. You are considered a new patient, even if you've been seen there before. Now, pay attention to the specialty part of that, or I say sometimes department. Um, if I go to the doctor, it's regular family practice, that's their department, um, and I need to see a dermatologist for a rash that just won't go away. We've been treating it with different things, and it just won't go away. So I need to see dermatology. That's a new specialty. It still might be in my, I go to Gunderson, so it still might be in the Gunderson Health System, but I've never been seen by anyone in dermatology before. I'm going to be a new patient there. Okay, does that make sense? So it's either if you haven't been seen in that specialty before or if it's been more than three years. Okay, three years to the date. An established patient is one who has seen the doctor within the last three years, so not a big deal. Okay. Outpatient and inpatient. Um, an outpatient is one who will drive and go to the doctor and get back in your car and drive back home. Okay. Um, when you see your providers, you don't have an assigned bed or room. Okay. Um, an inpatient is where I go to the hospital and I need to stay. I need to stay overnight. I'm assigned a room number. I'm assigned an attending or admitting physician. Okay. That's the difference between those. So, what these three things are for us is we need to think about these before we start with where, where to find our code, okay? Where are we? What are we doing? The type of service and, and what's our patient status, okay? If we can think of these three things when we're reading a clinic note, okay? I'm in the clinic, it's an outpatient visit and the patient is an established patient because she was seen here last week. Perfect. I can go in my code book and I can get started. Okay, I can get started with trying to find that code. So those three things are, are super important. Um, if you turn the page to page 264 here in your textbook, they talk about medical records documentation. A lot of this is health records management stuff. Um, it says patient information is located in the medical record, whether it's paper or electronic, it doesn't matter. Okay, this information is referred to as documentation. Documentation in a medical record has many different uses, like evaluation of the patient's treatment, communications regarding the patient's health care, reimbursement of claims, so getting paid, reviewing the use at the health care facility, okay, research and education, we could use charts for that, and legal documentation. Seven organizations, and they list them all, develop this, these 10 points below, okay, as minimum documentation guidelines. And if you want to read through those on your own, a lot of them you heard in, in health records management. When we look at the next page and see that heading that says key components, okay, there are three key components when we are picking our E&M codes, okay? The first key component is the level of history, okay? The second key component, as you can see there, because they're bulleted, is the examination, and the third is what we call MDM, or Medical, oh, blah, blah, blah. see, I hate, I can't talk at the same time and, and type. Medical decision making, we call that MDM. Those three key components, and there's a paragraph underneath them bulleted here in the textbook, and it says the key components of history, exam, and medical decision making reflect the clinical information that's all recorded by your doctor in the record. Key components are present in every patient case except counseling encounters, which are discussed later in the chapter. Key components, these three key components, enable you to choose the correct level of service, which means the right code, new patient encounters, consultations, emergency department visits, and admissions all require documentation 
of three of all of these key components. Subsequent visits, like daily hospital visits, which we call rounds visits, outpatient visits for an established patient, require that only two of these key components are actually documented and, and have to be present to sign the code. So they give us an example in the green box here. It says 99214, and the definition or description of that code says, Office or other outpatient visit for the evaluation and management of an established patient, which requires at least two of these three key components. And then in bold it says, a detailed history, a detailed exam, and medical decision making is moderate complexity. Do you see that each one of these bullets was just addressed? History was detailed, exam was detailed, and MDM was moderate. Okay, we need a descriptor for each one of these three components. Now, because it says established patient, it says two of these three key components are there. When you get to, and maybe you've already watched them, the e &M notes videos that I made when you put notes in your book, um, we wanted to underline or highlight or circle um, the three of three and the two of three to each one of these e &M, uh, areas. And we'll look at those together in the code book in just a second and make that make more sense. Under office or new patient, um, it gives us all of these areas where there is regular e &M office visits uh, for new patients. And I have written in my textbook here, and you might as well, usually for new patients, we need three of three. We need all three of those components documented. So we can't say the history was detailed and the decision making was moderate and not say anything about the exam. Okay, because it's a new patient. And when you think about it, we don't know anything about new patients. We need all of it documented. We need to go over this patient with a fine-toothed comb so we can figure out what's wrong with them correctly. Okay, so we need to make sure that with all new patients, that all three components are actually, you know, documented. And then usually with the established patients, like that paragraph stated above, established patients, rounds, visits, anywhere where it's not the first time that you're seeing that patient, those are a little more lenient. We already know something about that patient. We already have had visits. We already have history. We already have other notes that we can go on. So it is okay to only document two of the three levels or components for those types of visits. If you turn the page, um, it talks about what I just did. The two of the three key components can be things like established patient visits or subsequent. See the subsequent observation care, subsequent hospital care, subsequent nursing facility care. Subsequent means it's not the first time. It's more of a rounds or a second visit. Okay, So we don't have to be as detailed on those. When we back, look back at the history, okay, and look at the levels and what's all involved in making a history, I want to tell you that, and we might have seen this a little bit before, the HPI, the ROS, and the PFSH, we're all into acronyms and abbreviations in, in HIT. Um, documentation called the HPI, or the History of Present Illness, is involved in getting our level of history. Documentation of a review of systems, so that stands for, is involved in getting our level of history. And documentation for, for the fa past family social history is involved in getting that level of history. All three of these things right here, okay, make up our level of history. And in Intro to CPT, all of your assignments and anything that you're tested over, I will give you the level of history, or the book will give you the level of history for your homework. It will say the history was comprehensive, the history was detailed, the history was problem focused. Okay, it will give you the level. In advanced CPT, we have to go through and audit and find the levels. But in intro to CPT, we give the levels to you. Um, so they talk about history um, on the next few pages. It's not that big of a deal um, there. Uh, remember with your review of systems, the next page talks about review of systems. Remember that there's no touching. 
in review of systems. It is simply a question and answer.